Hello and welcome to the tutorial for Electro BIM by Design Master. If this is your first time watching these videos, I highly recommend starting from the beginning, as I'll be making changes to the same project throughout. If you'd like to follow along, links to the tutorial project and written tutorial are available in the description below. For this video, we'll look at modifying distribution equipment and branch circuit devices. In the last video, we used the edit command to modify devices on the single line diagram. On the ElectroBIM design ribbon, that functionality is separated into the panel edit, circuit edit, and instance edit commands. We'll be working in the floor plan, but I do want to keep the single line over here to the side so that you can see how the changes we make get carried through. We'll start by making some changes to our utility transformer by selecting it and running the panel edit command. Using this command, you can set all of the necessary information for each distribution equipment, as well as the upstream feeder and any overcurrent protective devices. Sections for fault and arc flash calculations are included as well. We'll set the transformer size to 200 kVA, then go down to the Fault Calculations section, set the Utility Fault at Device to Fixed, and enter 55,000 amps for the value. Setting a fixed fault value at the top of your distribution system is an important step for your fault calculations to be accurate. If you don't specify a value, ElectroBIM will go with a conservative calculation that assumes an infinite fault from the utility. Now we need to make some changes to a couple of our panels. If you had one or more devices selected when you ran the panel edit command, the dialog box will only display the selected devices to cut down on load times. To view the rest of your distribution, press the Load Panels button. Next, We'll modify panel MDP and set the bus size to 400 amps. Then we'll go to panel DP and set that bus size to 300 amps. Now we need to modify the main disconnects for both of these. We can save a little time by holding the control key and selecting panel MDP to pull up the information for both. We'll set the main disconnect type to breaker, and you can see both on the single line, and when I select either panel individually, that change has been applied to both. So that's how you make those changes for distribution equipment instances in the project. You can also front load some of that work by configuring these settings in the device families, so the information will already be set on each instance you insert across all your projects. We'll use the utility transformer again as our example. Select it, then run Revit's edit family command to open up the family. Once you are in the family, go to the Electro BIM Design ribbon and run the family edit command. The information you can set in this command depends entirely on the selected device type. So step one is setting this to Distribution Equipment Transformer. The top section is for configuring the entire family. The bottom section is for configuring specific types within the family. Any types you don't set up will use the information from the top section. We'll go to the 200 kVA type, and set override family values to yes. So we can configure the settings for this type. We'll set the size to 200 kVA. It isn't in the list of default values, but we can set that to custom and enter the value manually. Now we'll go to the 1000 kVA type, override those values, and set the size to 1000 kVA. Now that we've made our changes, 
we can use the load into project commands to update the family instances in the project. Let's use the command to load and close. And we don't need to save the family this time, but if you are configuring families that might get reused in other projects, make sure you do save those. We'll overwrite the existing version and its parameter values. Then select the transformer and run the panel edit command to see our changes. When you configure the size for transformers or bus size for panels at the family level, those values become locked for each type. So if you're going to modify families, it's kind of all or nothing. As you can see, the size for this is still set to 200 kVA to match its type. If we change the type to 1000 kVA, the size will update to match the setup we did earlier. We'll set that back to 200 and close the dialog box. Moving on from distribution equipment, now we're going to look at branch circuit devices. The first thing we're going to explore is circuit descriptions. With standard Revit to change your circuit descriptions, you'd select your devices and change the load name parameter value and properties, or just change it for everything on the circuit right here in the panel schedule. For some people, this works for them and is a hard habit to break. So when you first install ElectroBIM, that workflow is left alone. However, that also means you don't get access to any of the features ElectroBIM provides, like being able to set circuit descriptions at the instance and family levels so they carry down to the circuit automatically. So to take a look at that, we first need to enable ElectroBIM circuit description features. We can do that by going to the Customization dropdown and running the Project Options command. This dialog box is where you set up many of the ElectroBIM behaviors at the project level, such as how certain values are displayed or calculated. What we're interested in right now is the Circuit Description Method option, which is currently set to use Revit Circuit Descriptions. We'll switch that to use ElectroBIM Circuit Descriptions and press OK to close the dialog box. Now, to see these features in action, we'll select Circuit 1 on this panel schedule, which has the elevator motor on it. Because the circuit only has one device, we can actually modify that device from here by running the Instance Edit command. Again, that only works on single device circuits. If it was, say, a lighting circuit with multiple fixtures, the Panel Edit dialog box would open instead. From this dialog box, you can make changes to the branch circuit device instance, which will then carry over into whatever circuit it occupies. This means if you ever need to recircuit it, you won't lose any of those modifications. We'll change the circuit description to Set Circuit Description in Instance, then change it to LF Motor. Then we'll set the OCP trip to 100 amps and set the conductor wires to size based upon breaker. Press exit to close the dialog box. And you'll notice the circuit description and OCP trip have been affected by those changes. The wire size did not change, but we'll go over that in just a moment. As I mentioned before, in addition to managing those circuit settings in the branch circuit device instance, you can also do so from the device family. So let's go over to the floor plan, select the motor, and run Edit Family to crack it open. As with the Transformer family earlier, we'll run the Family Edit command, and this time we'll set the device type to Branch Circuit Device Equipment Connection which will give us all of these settings you'd typically see for motors and other equipment. We'll set the MOCP to 40 amps, the OCP trip to size as a motor compressor, so it doesn't exceed the MOCP we've set, and the conductor wires 
to size based upon loads. We'll press OK to close the dialog box. Then load the family back into the project, overwriting the existing version and its parameter values. When we go back to the panel schedule, everything is the same because it is still controlled by the work we did on the instance. To tell it to pull from the family, we'll run the instance edit command, set the OCP trip field to family default, and do the same for the conductor field. Notice the MOCP field is already using the family default because we didn't set an overriding value before. Press exit, and the trip has changed to reflect the work we did at the family level. We can go back to the instance, set the OCP trip to 70 amps, and see how those instance level changes override the family level settings. Similar to how you can override family level settings at the instance, you can also override instance level settings at the circuit by running the circuit edit command. As you can see, the OCP and wire callout reflect the work we've done so far at the family and instance level for that device. Let's have a look at a different panel, like panel A. Using the circuit table, we'll select circuit 2, then add existing to the beginning of the circuit description. You'll notice the description and the description prefix fields have been populated with that information, and you can enter values in these fields directly if you prefer. We'll go over to Circuit Details to set the OCP trip to 30 amps. And we're done with that circuit. Now we'll go to Circuit 8, change the description to REC, which again populates the fields over in Circuit Details. Then we'll set the circuit length to fixed. And if we enter 160 for the value, a few things happen. Because we increased the length, the voltage drop went up, past the NEC allowed 3%. ElectroBIM then upsized the conductors from number 12 wire to number 10 wire to bring the voltage drop back down. We'll take a peek at how you can adjust that behavior in a later video. If we close out and go to the panel schedule for panel A, you can see some of those changes. We've gone into a bit of detail about how ElectroBIM works with parameters. Something important to know, while it does output to existing Revit parameters for things like the breaker rating or the circuit description, that is more the exception than the rule. Most of the information provided by ElectroBIM is output to shared parameters for ElectroBIM. Therefore, if you want to see that information in tags or on the panel schedule, you need to make sure you are using those shared parameters. One specific example is the wire size. ElectroBIM does not touch any of the Revit parameters related to wires. It outputs two shared parameters. So, we need to modify this panel schedule template to display ElectroBIM's wire size instead. We'll go to Revit's Manage ribbon, Panel Schedule Templates, and Edit a Template. We just have the one, so we'll press Open to modify that one. We'll select the Wire Size column, and you can see it currently uses Revit's Wire Size parameter. So let's change that to the corresponding ElectroBIM shared parameter which is DMET Circuit Wire Callout Compact. You can always tell if it's an ElectroBIM shared parameter by the DME out front, which stands for Design Master ElectroBIM. The fourth letter tells you the parameter type. This is T for text. We also have N for number and a few others. We'll also change this heading to Wire Callout. 
As long as we're in here, let's look at how you can also use ElectroBIM shared parameters in formulas. For the MCB rating field, some users like to display the panel bus size here if it's main lugs only, but display the size of the main disconnect breaker or fused switch if it has one. We can do that here using Revit's calculated value command. We'll call this value ElectroBIM main disconnect formula. Set the discipline to common and the type to text. For the formula itself, we'll paste in this if statement that says if this parameter is zero, meaning the panel doesn't have a main disconnect, display the bus size in amps. Otherwise, display the trip rating of the main disconnect. If you are following along and want that formula, or you just want to know more about it, there's a link to a knowledge base article in the description below this video. We'll press OK, which closes the dialog box and inserts that value into the template. Then we'll select Finish Template to save our changes, and go to Change Template, and press OK to refresh the definition for the panel schedule. We can see now that it's displaying the ElectroBIM wire callouts instead of Revit's wire sizes. If we run Panel Edit, set the main disconnect type to Breaker, and the main disconnect trip to 90 amps, the formula we created is outputting that value. One last thing to show here. We've talked about how you need to make changes in ElectroBIM's commands and not by changing the parameters directly. Let's do a quick example of what that can look like. We'll go in and change the circuit description for A2. Doesn't matter what we put in because none of it's going to stick. We'll also change the trip value. And when we run the circuit edit command, none of those changes are carrying up. It still shows the previous description and rating. And when we close out, ElectroBIM pushes those values back out to those parameters, overwriting the changes we made. Those are the basics for using ElectroBIM's edit commands to modify your distribution equipment and branch circuit devices. In the next video, we'll dive into ElectroBIM's calculations, selective coordination features, and customization. See you there.